So today we're going to be talking about recruiting. And I know that our Tuesday chit chat was a very broad conversation about recruiting. You know, the very basics of recruiting, you know, how to say things, what to say and who to look for, you know, just the basics. But today's chat is going to be super, super specific. And I, I just want to tell you before we dive into this, this is going to be more of a heavy hitting conversation. It's going to be deep and it's going to really push your limits. And this is a unique opportunity. You have both of us at your disposal and we're freaking rock stars, but we're also regular freaking people. Mm -hmm. I'm not wearing a bra. I didn't <laughs> shower this morning. It's what we're doing with regular people. So don't think that, oh, that's Melissa Huckfeld or, oh, that's Jessica Posh. You know, they can do it, but I can't. Don't think that because absolutely anybody can. Just take a look at the top ranks of this company. Guys, we are all different shapes, sizes, backgrounds, you name it. Very different. And we all work our business very differently. So that said, we're going to give you excellent tips, tricks, and ideas. Adapt them to your style and they will absolutely work for you. It's just a matter of putting forth that effort consistently. Mm -hmm. I would have to so much agree on consistency. Oh my gosh, consistency. Here we go. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see if it shows. So there's our frequently asked question. And I want to put something out here really fast, just in case. Um, so here's our frequently asked question. Number one, I have a problem with word vomiting. Help. What do I do? Jessica, you want to start with that one? Absolutely. That is probably the number one blocker of recruiting is somebody word vomiting. Because if you remember back to when you were first thinking about joining Posh, if somebody would have come at you and given you all of the ideas, all of the hints, all of the tips, all of the benefits all at once, it would have been completely overwhelming. Would you guys not agree? Oh, well, we start at 20% commission. And then as soon as you sell $1,000 in PV, you get to 25% commission. And then when you recruit three people, you can hit your props. And then when you hit your props, you get free stuff. That is totally overwhelming. And that is word vomit. So Ooh. there's actually a great video on YouTube by Leah Dalton, who's a platinum premiere, and it's called Watch Your Balls. And this is the very best way I can describe not word vomiting. Pretend you're playing in a tennis match, okay? You throw a ball over or hit a ball over the net. You have to wait for them to return that ball before you hit another ball. Whereas if you're word vomiting, you're like a pitching machine where you're just firing tennis balls, tennis balls, tennis balls, tennis balls. Tennis balls and that person is never going to be able to recover. So when you're working on recruiting, whether you're at day one or you're talking to them for the 70th time, offer one bit of information or answer one question and wait for their response. Do not give them any additional information until they've responded with either another question or a feeling about your first response. Does that make sense? I love the watch your balls. Is it two ideas kind of mesh together to see which one they gravitate towards? So an example would be, you know, yeah, we get, you know, we start off, we get 20% discount and we are, everything is made in the United States or, you know, everything's cruelty free. So I'm presenting two informations about Posh and waiting to see which way they go. Because if they want to go the cruelty free, well, I'm definitely going to be going into more about chatting about um, we're made in America and, you know, some of our products are vegan. Or if they talk about the 20% and they say, oh, okay, well, blah, 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 tell me more about the money thing or, or how can I earn more or are there bonuses? I know which way to be going because their obviously mindset is on the money. And then um, that was a really great tip. And honestly, I love it because it helps me customize my responses to them. Uh, it's not so generic. You know, no, no one hates generic responses more than I do. And you can tell it wasn't even made for you. It was made for everyone. And it's just like, whatever. Make sure you're also ending in a question. That helps with the watching your balls. Open-ended question. I don't care. How's the weather? I don't know. But you definitely want to be making sure you're in that question to get the ball back over. And for anybody that doesn't know what an open-ended question is, that's just simply a question that they have to answer with something other than yes or no. Mm -hmm. You want to get them talking more. People join for their own reasons. They don't join because you need a monthly award. They don't join because you want them to join. They join for their own reason. So that tip that she just brought up is such a perfect way 
to dig deep into their reason without saying, and why do you want to join Posh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Frequently asked question number two, people say they can't afford the $99 kit. Help. <laughs> My knee jerk reaction is, well, honey, you can't afford not to afford $99. <laughs> Because then I launch into, you know, how much Posh has really changed my life. But aside from that, you know, because there are people that maybe need to save up or they don't have a disposable $99, have a conversation of how they can save the money. $10 a week, $20 a week, they can have it saved up in no time. Mm -hmm. There's other options. Look at the kit that we're getting. They can pre-sell the pampering for my business bag. That's got $100 worth of products in it. And if they pre-sell that, They've got that money. Mm -hmm. Demonstrate to them how they can earn that $99 back with their launch party. You mentioned that by saying, have a conversation about how to get the money. You know, I have done this before where I said, well, when, when are you, when do you want to join? I know you want to join somewhere in the back of your head. And I put that out there because I know they do in the back of their head. Everyone wants to join this company in the back of their head because they're kind of curious. I get that. But I always take it a step further and say, so when would you like to join? When do you think you could save the money up by? And if they say, oh, by the end of September, okay, well, let's break that down. So if you need $100 plus, you know, tax and shipping, let's look at $115. let us just round up. Let's break this in half by four weeks. Let's do it that way. And then, you know, another little thing is help them figure out how to earn it. Like she said, kickback I usually get when I say sell, pre-sell what comes in the, the big bag, that pampering for my business bag. Well, I don't know what's going to come in. It might be a body scrubber, a body builder. Well, here's what you do know. You do know it comes with a BFF. You do know it comes with um, uh, a healer stick. You do know that it comes with a chunk bar. So there are things specific that you can actually pre-sell. Maybe even schedule a home party. If this is somebody that's local to you, have them schedule a home launch party before they've even joined. You mm -hmm. go and conduct the party. You're accepting paper orders. Oh, mm -hmm. by the way, you have $400 in sales, Sally Sue Hostess. Are you sure you don't want to join? Because if she joins that night, that becomes her party, which still benefits you as the sponsor. Do mm -hmm. not cut your nose off to spite your face and feel like you're losing out on $400 in sales. You are launching a strong new team member. That $400 launch party is going to give her confidence to surge ahead in her business, which, hello, is going to lead to promotions for you. With an online version. So when I did an online party for someone, this just actually just happened. Instead of me, like, put instead of, instead of them going online to put their orders in, I took their orders and was able to send them a PayPal invoice. They still paid me for the product. And then I said, okay, you know, hostess, you just had a $625 party. This is, this would be your commission. This would be your money next Wednesday. Are you sure you don't want to join? Let's talk about it. And what, you know, she joined and you know what I did? I paid her all the money with all the orders. Boom, done. And she put them all. Yep. Well, the answer to the question that you don't ask is always no. Mm -hmm. Frequently asked question number three. I don't want to appear pushy. Help. Don't be pushy. <laughs> um, and my gut reaction is, wait a minute. Why do you think you're being pushy here? Is this not your passion? Do you not believe in this opportunity? Are you not team building because you believe in the opportunity to be able to grow this company and to make the money? Define pushy because there is a such thing as being pushy. Oh, hey. God. Hey, Melissa, are you going to join yet? Mm. Hey, Melissa, you're joining on uh, August 1st. It's August 31st, and I'm not going to hit my monthly award if you don't join. Oh, That is pushy. Don't be pushy. Mm -hmm. What's not being pushy is, hey, girl, I'm so excited. You know, the kit is awesome, and we're going into the fall season. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? Where, where's your head at? Checking in with somebody keeping in contact with somebody, following up with somebody, none of those things are pushy. Unless they have said, Melissa, do not message me about Posh anymore, and you're still messaging them, you're not being pushy. That's the bottom line. I you have a gift. The gift of the Posh opportunity, it's a gift, you guys. It's not up to us whether or not they accept it. It's up to them whether or not they accept it. But it is up to us to consistently make sure 
We live and breathe our posh business every day. Somebody who's thinking of joining does not. So it is our job to follow up with them and keep that gentle reminder that they would be great at this. They can do this. This is a great opportunity. I get those. We've all gotten them, right? And you know it's a generic message. And you know it's just like you can tell they're not genuine. You can yep. just tell. <laughs> we all got them. Hey, girl, how are you? Okay, Ooh. the last message I received from you was asking me when I was going to join. So I wonder what's coming next. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's so funny you mentioned that. Yesterday, I actually posted a training on the team page, and I'll mention that here. If you're going to follow up with a join message, you best be damned that you had been already talking about just something in general in the middle. Because if you are only talking posh with her, join, 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 bye. Join, 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 bye. O-M-G. That could be considered pushy. When you have somebody who is interested in joining your team or who you are interested in having join your team, you guys, not only follow them on Facebook, but you can mark C first, like so that they're coming up first in your newsfeed. Make a concerted effort to interact with way more of their Facebook posts than you might otherwise normally do. You're liking their stuff. You're commenting on random family pictures or funny things that they share. That way you're showing up in their newsfeed they're showing up in your newsfeed, and that just speaks to what we were just talking about, where you're not only discussing posh. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Totally agree. I love that part. Um, and that goes back to just Facebook algorithms too. Mm -hmm. The more you interact in, in their in their newsfeed, Facebook will assume that they want to know about you, and then your posts will all of a sudden start showing up in their newsfeed. It's actually really great thing to have the algorithm it's sometimes so yes that's a really great way to build that relationship so frequently, request, frequently asked question number four my customer base is too small help oh god jessica I'm running with this one <laughs> book more parties you have to expand your customer base by booking parties mm -hmm. and if you're like well how do i book parties you've got to start talking to people interact with more people on facebook reach out to them about posh, ask the uncomfortable questions. Um, Melissa has a ton of trainings on how to request parties, how to ask for parties. Booking more parties is absolutely going to grow your customer base. Aside from that, getting samples out to people, make a post on your personal Facebook with an actual photo of you working on sample packages. I did that and I got like six random sample requests from people on my friends list that I haven't interacted with in forever. So make sure that you're putting yourself out there. You can't sit at home and expect your customer base to grow. It's not going to happen. Book vendor events. Get out into your community and have sample packages on you. There's no wrong way to do this. There are people that have grown their business by meeting strangers out in the world. That is certainly not for me, but I will do it if I have to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I've done that before, like, you know, office ambushes, just yeah. doing the uncomfortable and saying, Hi, would you like some pot? Like, I know, I get it, y'all, but you've got to get out of your comfort zone. There is this quote that says, nothing will change unless something changes. And, like, there's that one big quote that has, like, a circle that says, nothing changes if nothing changes. And it just literally goes around and around. So if you are telling me that your customer base is too small, I'm, A, going to ask you, well, what are you doing to get out of it? You know, like, honest, honestly, think reflectively. And like I said, this is going to be one of those heavy hitting chats here. What are you doing to get out of your customer zone? I would definitely be urging you to, um, um, like Jessica was saying, you know, talking to strangers, broaden my customer base by getting onto more platforms. Um, and there's actually like this uh, statistic. Facebook is nowhere near the amount of people you can hit on other platforms. Facebook is actually a very small bubble. We might think it's big, but it's very, very small. But yes, and then another thing she said that I love and, and show your money maker. I love that. I swear that needs to be a quote for Jessica. Show your money maker. You need to be putting pictures of you out there with Posh. You know, it doesn't have to be like this. <laughs> it doesn't have to be that way. It can be just like you're cooking and you have a face mask on multitasking or multi-masking, however you want to word it. There are so many ways that you could put your money maker out there. Little side note about, you know, Jessica said to get posh on people. I know that the most frequent kickback I get is, well, they're probably just going to steal samples and they're never going to buy. And my response is, look, I get it. I, Jessica gets them. I get them. 
it happens. But if you say no or you don't do it, you could be potentially turning down a, a lot of people at that point because you don't know their motives. I can say on that is, you know, you can do a little bit of research. I absolutely research my sample requesters to the best of my ability. And somebody that's just out there scamming for samples, more often than not, you're going to be able to tell. I mean, maybe her feed is just full of all the free stuff she gets. Look what free stuff I got today. Free stuff. <laughs> That one we might want to take a pause about, but there have been people that maybe don't have a picture in their profile picture. And I'm like, Oh God, she's probably a sample stealer, mm -hmm. but I go forward anyway. And she ends up joining my team guys. Mm -hmm. We really can't prejudge. We can absolutely protect ourselves by, you know, doing a little bit of light Facebook stalking, something like that. Or like if I get a random email, I'll say, oh, yes, please connect with me on my Facebook business page. That way I'm giving them one extra task to do. And if they're just totally out there to steal from me, maybe they're not going to do it. But that's a super excellent point. At the end of the day, guys, these sample packages, they're an investment in our business. You don't always make back on your investment but you make enough investments and you absolutely do make back. Frequently asked question number five, I'm only online. How can I new, get new opportunities? I like this one. I like this one. Okay, yeah. So if you're only online, there are so many other platforms you can be on. YouTube was like 10 times the reach yeah. of Facebook. I mean, it is unreal. It's not too late to get on YouTube because you might be looking and be like, oh, you guys already have it, blah, blah, blah. There are people that start on YouTube like literally two weeks ago and they just have the personality and the zest and mm -hmm. they're going to pick up followers. Mm -hmm. You guys, people relate to different people. Those of you watching, some of you are probably like, yeah, Jessica rocks. Some of you are like, yeah, Melissa rocks. People relate to different people. So mm -hmm. if you're not putting yourself out there, you're shooting yourself in the foot because the people that are going to relate to you aren't going to find you. Mm -hmm. Also going live, going live on Facebook pushes it out to so many more people than any post or video that you could ever put out there. So mm -hmm. it's all about if you're online only, girl, you have got to put yourself out of your comfort zone and put yourself on all of those medias that you can. As people shop around. So if this is why I preach consistency, no matter what social media platform you're on, you've got to be consistent because you do not know who's watching you. They may not be liking, they may not be commenting, but the second you stop posting because, oh, no one's buying, no one's joining, I give up. That person who is watching you, who is about to join you, is going to go join someone else now. They seem interested. And then they go away. And they ignore my messages. Help. Okay. So this is a really great one because this goes back to that relationship building that we've already talked about. So if you are messaging someone on Facebook or even Instagram or, you know, maybe you just are emailing back and forth or... You need to be interacting with them somehow on whatever they're on. So if you were messaging them on Facebook and they just stop ignoring you, okay, first of all, consider that they are ignoring you. And life happens. I know that I have opened up a message and then I got busy or I got distracted and my window closed and I completely forgot. Go to their Facebook and go see, are they present? If they're not even present, if like all of a sudden they just kind of disappear, maybe something happened. And you just need to follow up with them later in a few days and say, hey, is everything okay? Get into their life. Because then when they start to trust you, they might not feel so threatened by the message that you're sending them to join a company. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, people that ignored me previously will come back and respond to me three months later. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I never saw this. I mean, whether mm -hmm. she never saw it or not, I'll never know. But the point is, is that I regained her trust and she did respond. Mm -hmm. And I bet it was because you were consistently posting or doing something too, right? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's really important. Like she said, people do get busy in their lives. They might have opened up your message when they were in a work meeting and they were like, mm -hmm. oh God, I need to respond to this and then forgot. Judging. Yes. Judging. They, he says, literally, if you are feeling awkward, if you're feeling like you're bothering someone, 
don't be afraid to say, you know what? I know this is awkward. I'm feeling kind of awkward. Don't be afraid to say that. Do you know how many times I told people, I'm just feeling really silly by saying this. And then I may say something else about joining. And I say, you know what? In my head, that made more sense. Did that even make sense to you? Like, be genuine. It's okay. Hello. We're all real people. Your prospects are real people. You're a real person. We're real people. It, it's okay to have feelings. It's okay to feel awkward. It's okay to ask questions. So, oh, yeah. yeah. That's Frequently asked question number seven in general is how do I handle objections? Um, I, my, this is just on the forefront, so I have to speak before I lose it. Is going back to the Zha Jing person. God, I feel so bad if I'm mispronouncing his name. I'm, I'm going to offend him greatly at this point. One of the things he said at Uncon was to aim high and then you keep on going lower. So how you would handle objections. So if you ask someone to join your team and they say, no, that's not for me. I'm just not a seller. You can come back with a few things by simply asking, well, why don't you say that? Why do you say that? You can say that. You can also start to move down the ladder. Well, okay, I get that. You don't, you know, maybe you had a bad experience. Whatever the reason is, you can validate their reason. Always validate because people have legit reasons. But you could also ask for a party. Well, hey, would you like to share posh with your friends and family and at least get some rewards that you could just spend on the products? If they say no, then you ask for a referral. You know, you know someone who. So you aim high and then work your way down. There's a ton of trainings on YouTube about handling objections. So if this is something, <coughs> excuse me, if this is something that you struggle with, I would encourage you to find outside training in general about handling objections. But the most tried and true way is the feel, felt, found method. Mm -hmm. I know how to feel. I have felt that way before. Here is what I found. That's an oversimplified explanation, but there is a ton of training on feel, felt, found. You're, you're telling them, I know how you feel. You're validating their feelings. I felt that way to when, blank. Mm -hmm. Here is what I found. That handles their objection without saying, without, you don't want them to feel like, they give you an objection, you're like, oh, no, honey, that's nothing. You don't want to minimize their feelings because they're scared. They're not going to be able to sell anything. That's a legitimate objection. I know how you feel. I felt that way too. When I got on YouTube, I was so scared. I would be laughed at and ridiculed. Here's what I found. Freaking superstar success by getting on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's just one simple example, but feel felt found. Write that down and research yeah. that for filling any objection. Frequently asked question number eight. What does a follow-up look like? Oh, I love this one because I feel like we've touched on this quite a bit. Jessica, why don't you start with that one? I've already been talking about this throughout the whole video. Follow-up can look a billion different ways, honestly. I mean, following up can be as simple as going and onto their newsfeed and liking some of their pictures and participating in their outside of posh life. Following up can also be like, hey, girl, I just wanted to check in. Are you still interested? Hey, girl, we have an opportunity event coming up. Can I send you an invite? There is a bazillion different ways that you can follow up. What's most important is that you actually do follow up and you maintain that contact. And just like the last question, there is a bazillion different opinions on the best formulas for follow up. I like to follow two, 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 two days, two weeks, and every two months thereafter, they're hearing from me. Mm -hmm. You can go on YouTube and find a lot of different opinions. But the most important thing to remember with follow-up is that you are maintaining communication. If you haven't been following up, just a little side note there, it's never too late to start. Mm -hmm. But if you never start, then you just never do it. And that's really hard. And I know that if there's a few people who are out there like me who, you know, many moons ago, maybe like two or years ago, I don't even know when, when I realized following up was going to be just the only way to, to go about this business. When I realized I hadn't been doing it, I was kind of faced with, well, where do I begin? Like, do I just go all the way back to the orders? Don't let that, where do I begin stall you? Like literally my panic set in and I was like frozen. The best advice I can give you is just freaking start with the person who just bought from you last month. Yep. Don't even worry about trying to go back to the beginning of your posh business. You start by looking at who just ordered and just start working your way, like just start. The secret to getting ahead is getting started. It's the most important, it's also the most uncomfortable. The more that you do something outside of your zone, 
it becomes comfortable. And then you just keep on increasing that zone. So before you know it, you can look back and be like, holy crap, you know, like you've done so much because it's comfortable. So, you know, definitely get outside your comfort zone, do something. It's not Have just- Have you ever heard um, the saying, practice makes perfect? Well, I say practice makes permanent. Mm -hmm. when practice it you practice it it makes it permanent and it just becomes second nature it's never going to be perfect we don't want to be perfect but we want to start